you know, something that would have shocked me if I were coming at this now as an applicant is just how many of these professors get a day. And I, I was shocked when I first took on this job a couple of years ago, how many of these I started getting pretty much immediately in my first year. So something that you should keep in mind if you're thinking about applying is that the you know professors are going to get hundreds of these, uh, depending on the institution, but for UBC physics and astronomy, it's you know hundreds per cycle that we'll see and probably you know at least a few times a day um so i respond i tend to be grabbed if someone has something actionable you know if there is they're asking me um do you expect to have an opening you know for fall 2020 or, or something that i can really give a concrete answer to um that tends to grab me in a way that I can engage with. If it's something really high level, like, do you think I'm a good fit? You know, that's not something I can speak to. <laughs> and, you know, I'll, I'll usually just encourage them broadly to apply because it's it's the committee that's going to adjudicate that um, for master students. Um, so it's also worth considering that uh, the difference between applying to master's versus a PhD, or at least this is in the case, this is the case in physics, uh, the most important thing is actually making that contact with the potential supervisor. So that's the, the most important box to check in the admissions process for PhD candidates is do you have a committed supervisor who is on board with taking you on, who's going to commit that funding um, to your PhD research projects? Whereas for masters, it's a lot more kind of general pool. Um, so you, you'll be admitted as part of a really big class and you'll all go through your coursework together and you've got some time to, um, to figure out uh, what kind of a research project you'd wanna do.